Hi, I'm Paul Sage. Hi, I'm Nick Conkle. Hi, I'm Dan Crenshaw. And we're here to talk about the group gameplay in Tamriel. Yeah, so here what we're looking at is a, an overland boss monster. One of the things we looked at is the fact that people at first really kind of like to get their legs, so to speak, under them by playing alone. And so what we wanted to do is provide um, friction elements uh, to really get people involved in playing with other people because we don't want to force you to play with others. We want to give you encouragement. So we opened up here with uh, Sorcerer's Crystal Shard, kind of stunned the guy right off. Uh, I'm the healer there, just went into Lightning Form, we'll do it again, yeah. Um, so that's gonna reduce my damage. Uh, so I usually pop that when the uh, boss has turned to target me. Uh, you see me blocking there as he unleashed his AoE. Uh, I popped the, heal the healing ward, or steadfast ward, on my buddy Eric there since he was getting focused by the boss. Um, and now I'm just spamming. Yeah, he gets, when he gets to low health, it's time for Mage's Fury. So we have, we have pretty have, furious. You know, the execute abilities in our game are really useful and very popular. So when you get a, a boss down uh, to a certain health threshold, everyone kind of just goes into execute mode and try and finish them off as fast as you can. This is um, trying to find uh, a group member. And the, and the fact that, you know, we, we don't want you to, we want to make sure that the world is big and therefore we put lots of exploration points, but we don't want to artificially keep you from people by making it to where, you know, it takes an hour to get to somebody. So we have fast travel mechanisms where you can use either these way shrines, which is what you're seeing here, or, uh, you know, if you're actually in the group, um, you can teleport uh, to that nearest group member, which, which may put you at a way shrine just because we have to put a safe place. Uh, but the idea is to get you with your group members as fast as possible. Yeah, and being able to just pop open your map, click on that way shrine, and instantly teleport there uh, anywhere anywhere that you've already discovered, it's really nice. And this is a dark anchor encounter. Yeah, anytime you see something like this out in the world, and you know, hey, there's six guys there, and they're performing some sort of super ritual, and I'm pretty sure something terrible is going to happen after that, you want to be able to quickly get a friend to come with you, because you're not going to be able to take that out by yourself, probably. That guy's going to be fine. Trust me, <laughs> Trust me guys. I don't think he's going to be fine no, no, at all. It's going to be great. <laughs> he's, he's floating in midair. No, this, oh, think, oh, yeah. Um, you, you, <laughs> yeah, so he got sacrificed, and in his place, <laughs> bad things. Um, I think one of the funniest things about no, Dark He's going to be fine, too. <laughs> oh, he's not going to be fine at all. No, that feels good. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy floating up into the sky. Countdown to one shot. Three, two... One, one shot. There's nothing wrong with uh, sneaking up with a bow. P.S. That guy was dead. <laughs> one shot. Get the AOEs. Uh, the idea is, is that Molag Paul, uh, who's this you know, a Daedric prince, is trying to pull the world, which is called Nern, into his realm of Cold Harbor um, and, and basically make it a bad time for everybody. So this is, this is one of those anchor points, and that's why you see all of uh, his minions spawning in. Uh, these Daedra are trying to prepare the way uh, for him to bring Nern into Cold Harbor. Uh, this this Dark Anchor's not given up easily. Um, you know, I think we're we're pretty well positioned here to make sure that we can, you know. But you can we can see monsters. Every person's engaged in an individual little fight, and um, uh, Dan sort of in the back healing, but also dealing with guys that are rushing at him. So there's just there's just enough action that if you uh, if you aren't coordinated and working together like this then you know everyone will just scatter and die on their own um, so you know dark anchors really started to take off when we introduced the mechanics of uh, you know the switches there or the pinions that you have to release and you have to decide okay which one of us is going to go stop <laughs> fighting the monsters to go run over and hit the pinions it just added uh, you know a few more interesting decision points in the uh gameplay there yeah i really like the feel of it versus how like it used to feel more like a like an arena you know a game style and this is more like more like balls trying to defend himself throwing everything he's got at you and and you sort of have to just deal with all the problems and they're just coming constantly probably want to protect the healer there yeah there you go oh is that, is that the crystal mortar there i love that one yeah, I really like just how it's just a continuous wave of all kinds of terrible things from from all, to all kinds of terrible Daedric uh, enemies, and you know, and because of that unpredictability, you want to make sure you bring a, a you know really flexible uh, party and build to the to the situation. You know, we switch back and forth between first person and third person. Uh, you know, I know a lot of the guys around here uh, like to play in third person. Uh, just because of the situational awareness, but almost every time I'll play in first person, 
uh, just because I really like the level of detail it provides, and, and some of the cues are easier to read. Actually, I like the bow first person in particular too. There's something I mean, there's something about the aiming that that feels very good to me when I when I play that way versus um, in melee a, a lot more often. I like to play in third person. I think something worth pointing out too about the what you're seeing on screen right here is that it's the Dragon Knight um, Fire Staff build, but he's wearing heavy armor, um, so it's kind of an unusual combination, right? There isn't really an archetype that that fits with per se. It's a little mage, it's a little battle mage. Um, so, and it's just something that people found on their own. It wasn't necessarily something we uh, we, we built the game around. It, it was a, it was a build that emerged naturally when people sort of found the synergy between uh, the the fire staff and, and some of the dragon knight abilities. So, it's pretty popular, and it's also it's also quite survivable. You can see them both tanking and and dishing out some pretty solid AOE damage. So, I I really think my clan fear is beating us all. The <laughs> clan fear, that, that thing's doing work. Get it done, clan fear. Yeah. He's taking on that Storm Rage knock. <laughs> oh, that was the Templar Spear. Yeah, yeah spearing him for days there. Ability. You know, I, th I think if you're playing uh, the Bow Templar, uh, it's certainly that Spear ability that knocks him down. Yeah, it's pretty um, cornerstone. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very helpful. And then if you take the Bow ability, which is Scattershot, uh, you've got another uh, knockdown, so you can take on three opponents pretty easily. Uh, yeah, so I, I chose the Sorcerer Healer. Um, because I love the heal staff abilities first off, and uh, the sorcerer gets a ton of mana regen. Yeah, dark exchange. Um, yeah, and the dark exchange ability, which basically lets me sacrifice stamina, which as a healer I'm not using a whole lot, right. uh, to regen both health and mana. So yeah. just well, awesome all around. Well, speaking of sacrifices, we yeah. have this <laughs> have this going on. You know, for uh, practice being illegal, Daedric Warship sure does play a yeah, lot. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> awfully prevalent. <laughs> yeah. This is a harvester. You can see that there's a little orb on the side of your screen there that just got exploded that uh, will, will gradually restore health um, if you don't stop it from getting to the, to the harvester. That's sort of how you take her down. Uh, and there's four of them that spawn, and you have to take them, take them out before they get to her. Um, nice dodge. Yeah, that was a pretty sweet dodge roll. I think a harvester is actually uh, one of our unique Daedra for uh, Elder Scrolls Online, correct? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So that's at the end of all the waves, or, or the, all the, the sort of continuous waves. There's one giant boss, and then you get the opportunity to knock out the thing for good, uh, which is what's happening here. And you can see, like, it was in, it was a really bad place. The world was warped around this, and after you take it out, it sort of returns to normal. You know, the yeah. skies go back to clear. Yeah, these sparkles. Yeah, take yeah. that, Mullet Ball. Stay out of our Tamriel.